Good evening, dear friends, colleagues, minister, Mr. Assistant Secretary, ambassadors, um, excellencies, uh, especially recognizing the presence of uh, His Excellency uh, Mr. Jacek Chaputovic, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, of uh, Poland, and His Excellency Mr. Richard Albright, U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary for State uh, for the Bureau of Population, Refugees, and Migration, who uh, honor us with our presence. Really uh, delighted to uh, have this opportunity to, to join uh, all of you uh, on this occasion. Uh, I would like to uh, warmly welcome all participants to the uh, Warsaw Process Working Group on Humanitarian and Refugee Issues. We are delighted that you uh, were able to join us for what we hope will be a very productive series of discussions on such, an important, so, such important topics as access to education, child protection, uh, in the context of the refugee and humanitarian crisis in the Middle East. Uh, before uh, making my uh, own remarks uh, in that regard, I would like to invite uh, our very distinguished uh, guests and co-hosts Mr. Chaputovic and uh, Mr. Albright uh, to address you. Let me first of all uh, thank Poland and the United States for inviting Brazil to host this uh, working group, which is a unique opportunity to uh, contribute to this uh, ever challenging endeavor of helping foster a brighter future for the Middle East, a region for which Brazil cares so much through dialogue and cooperation. Minister Chaputovic, you have the floor. Excellencies, uh, Minister Araujo, Deputy Assistant Secretary Albright, uh, distinguished participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me join uh, our Brazilian hosts um, with Minister Araujo in the first place in welcoming you to this important event. Thank you, Ernesto, for taking the leading role in the Working Group on Humanitarian and Refugees uh, uh, Group of the Warsaw Process. The present meeting in Brasilia is part of the broader uh, process stemming from the results of the Ministerial on Peace and Security in the Middle East, organized in Warsaw in February 2019. The goal uh, was to establish an informal format in which the world community could objectively and impartially discuss pertinent problems related to stability and security in the Middle East. Five working groups have convened so far, um, discussing issues related to cybersecurity, maritime and aviation security, energy security, human rights and non-proliferation of missiles. Another group on counter-terrorism will be held in Morocco at the beginning of March. The first round of working groups meetings will be wrapped up and endorsed politically at the ministerial conference in Washington, D.C. later uh, in spring. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the conflicts in the Middle East, especially in Syria, Iraq, Yemen, continue to cause a dire humanitarian situation. Refugee crisis remain a great challenge, both for the neighboring countries and for the European Union, including Poland, including uh, our neighbors. These conflicts deprive thousands of people, and particularly children, of one of the, their basic needs and rights, namely safety. Children are being maimed abducted and attacked, recruited to fight, sexually abused, and denied access to education and humanitarian aid. Poland has been traditionally involved in the international protection of children's rights. We initiated the Convention on the Right of the Child adopted by the UN General Assembly on 20th of November 1989. Promoting the issue of protection of children in armed conflict was one of the priorities of Poland's membership in the United Nations Security Council in 2018-2019. 
On our initiative, the UN Security Council adopted Resolution 2475 on persons with disabilities. Protection of refugees and internally displaced persons remains a priority of the Polish Development Cooperation, concentrated on providing shelter, rehabilitation and education. For example, in the Zatari camp for Syrian refugees in Jordan, a training center for medical staff was built with the Polish support. Together with Jordan Health Aid Society International, we train their medical personnel. Another example is a humanitarian project by Polish Medical Mission also in Zatari camp in Jordan, which provided already over 20,000 people with shelter and social assistance. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are glad that Brazil and Latin American countries are engaged in solving of the crisis in the Middle East. I am convinced that they can share their valu valuable experience of dealing with the humanitarian and refugee crisis in Venezuela. This experience might also be applied successfully in the Middle East. We gathered here in the framework of Warsaw process. There is a number of other initiatives for the Middle East, but they are largely based on unilateral approach. What differs the Warsaw process is a multilateral orientation which gives it legitimization from the international community. Only through acting together we can find durable solution granting peace and stability in the Middle East. The inhabitants of the region fully deserve it, so does the international community. I wish you successful discussions in the following two days and contribute to the ways we can guarantee together peace and stability in the Middle East. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Chaputovic, dear friend, for your remarks. Uh, I would, I'm uh, honored now to uh, pass the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Albright, Deputy Assistant Secretary. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm very pleased to be with you this, uh, this evening as we open the Warsaw Process Working Group on Humanitarian Issues and Refugees. Uh, and I want to very uh, heartily thank Foreign Minister Araujo and Foreign Minister Chaputovic uh, for their excellent partnership in convening this group to raise the profile of education and the protection of children during humanitarian crises in the region. We're grateful that so many of our government counterparts are joining us from capitals as well as from embassies in Brasilia. And I want to thank Minister Araujo and our Brazilian hosts for welcoming us here to the beautiful Itimarachi uh, Palace. Uh, I look forward to discussing how we can advance the education and protection of children and youth during humanitarian crises in the Middle East. This topic is highly relevant to the Warsaw process and its overall focus on promoting the future peace and security of the Middle East region. There is a clear and urgent need for immediate collective action. Millions of children across Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and refugee hosting countries are exposed to trauma and displacement. Providing these children with opportunities to learn and access protection support is essential for the future of their communities and societies. Secretary of State Pompeo asks that I share the following message with you. Dear colleagues, I send my greetings to those gathered for the Humanitarian Issues and Refugees Working Group in Brasilia, which fulfills a commitment made at the Ministerial to Advance Peace and Security in the Middle East in February 2019 in Warsaw, Poland. I regret that I cannot be with you here in person. This meeting comes at a critical moment. Today, humanitarian and refugee crises in Syria, Iraq, and Yemen are affecting millions of children and youth across the Middle East. These crises are preventing them from accessing quality education and present grave threats to their safety and well-being. The numbers are staggering. 
the crisis in Syria, now in its ninth year, has forced more than one-third of school-aged Syrian children out of school, nearly three million children. In Yemen, there are as many as two million children out of school. As millions of young people lose access to education and opportunity because of these crises, the region itself risks losing the contributions and human capital of its next generation of leaders and innovators. The Working Group on Humanitarian Issues and Refugees is advancing our shared objective of addressing the safety and well-being of the most vulnerable victims of the humanitarian crises in the region. It is providing each of our nations with the opportunity to reinvigorate international efforts to address shared challenges and to advance the education and protection of children and youth affected by crises. I thank each of you for attending and welcome the participation of non-governmental organizations from the region, as well as organizations like UNICEF, UNHCR, and the International Committee of the Red Cross. The issues that the working group is dealing with are complex, and all stakeholders, whether in government or out, have an important role to play. The United States will continue to develop, demonstrate its leadership and commitment to the region by working to address these issues, as well as the leading drivers of instability in the Middle East. And finally, thank you to Brazil and Poland for co-chairing this important meeting alongside the United States. Brazil, which has absorbed some 225,000 refugees and migrants from Venezuela, is well-placed to convene this discussion and share its own recent experiences. And I look forward to seeing progress made on these critical matters and hearing of your success in Brasilia. Sincerely, Mike Pompeo. As the single largest, single largest uh, humanitarian donor, we see education for displaced children as a critical investment in both their future and ours. We are a leading advocate for sustaining and expanding access to safe quality education at the onset of a humanitarian emergency through early recovery and beyond. Evidence suggests that investing in quality education can lead to significant improvements in the protection of children, including reductions in early marriage, child labor, and other forms of exploitation. The United States is pleased to support the education of children in humanitarian crises, and we fund a range of activity, education activities for displaced children that strive for the shared outcomes of learning and protection, including provision of school materials, school rehabilitation, teacher training, and specific activities to support the unique needs of children exposed to traumatic events, such as access to mental health and psychosocial support, and building the capacity of caregivers to meet the emotional needs of children. Additionally, the United States is committed to reducing the unique barriers girls face in accessing education, whether through enrollment outreach, safe transportation, increasing the cadre of female teachers, or the provision of hygiene products. Two of the most important aspects of education and crises are working to ensure access for displaced children in national education systems and prioritizing the safety of schools. In Jordan, where the government has generously opened public schools to refugee children, the United States supports efforts to address both priorities through our partner, the non-governmental organization Relief International. U.S. funding provides remedial education for older refugee children and addresses critical social challenges such as bullying and violence in schools to prevent disruptions to the school learning environment that can drive children to drop out of school. And building social ties between refugee and host community students is also the key to ensuring their success. In Turkey, the United States supports implementing partners' provision of Turkish language classes and activities to bring refugee and Turkish youth together through community projects to support social cohesion. Children affected by conflict in the Middle East face numerous protection challenges and uncertain futures. In addition to the thousands of children killed and injured during these conflicts, children face threats to their well-being after their families' resources are depleted forcing them into child labor or early marriage or even recruitment into armed groups in order to survive. Ensuring the safety and well-being of these children calls for a range of actions to respond to each child's specific circumstances and needs. And the United States is working through our humanitarian partners to help address these problems 
whether by helping families fulfill basic subsistence needs, promoting a protective environment for children, supporting their caregivers, enhancing access to education, providing psychosocial support, and identifying short and long-term care arrangements for unaccompanied children. We are fortunate to have with us uh, this week uh, a diverse group of humanitarian experts from international and non-governmental partner organizations who have traveled here to join this discussion, and I want to thank them for their involvement. The United States is proud to be supporting many of the participating organizations, and I look forward to the opportunity to meet and engage with many of you and to advance our shared dialogue around the education and protection of children in the Middle East. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Brien, for your remarks. Um, I uh, would like once more to, uh, uh, to reiter reiterate how thankful we are for uh, uh, the presence of um, all of you uh, and this opportunity uh, here tonight uh, and to uh, bring uh, the, uh, the attention and uh, the prestige of your countries to, uh, to these uh, discussions. Uh, I would like to... Uh, uh, praise and commend very uh, uh, emphatically the, uh, the effort articulated about one year ago uh, at the Warsaw Conference to promote the future of peace and security for the Middle East, which I had the opportunity uh, to attend. Um, it was very uh, early in, in my tenure, very early in the uh, uh, current administration in Brazil, and um, uh, I realized back then uh, how convergent uh, this uh, endeavor was with uh, our attempt here in Brazil to bring uh, new ideas, uh, fresh perspectives, uh, and decisive action to our international uh, engagement, which are in line with uh, the, the deep transformations that we are trying to bring about uh, in Brazil. We. Uh, uh, are committed and uh, we think the way ahead is through uh, creative uh, action, uh, bold processes uh, which are at the same time realistic and ambitious as the Warsaw uh, process clearly uh, is. This process is already attracting a lot of attention worldwide. I think it's uh, proving that it has uh, the ability, uh, the capacity to uh, uh, help uh, in getting closer to solutions that we didn't think would be possible uh, before. The, um, uh, we, we, Brazil is uh, sure that we can contribute to, uh, to these debates, uh, as you see uh, from, the, uh, from the remarks by um, the, our co-chairs, uh, how uh, Brazil, Poland and the United States in this case can bring different perspectives but totally convergent to, uh, to these issues and which uh, will, of course, be enriched by contributions of uh, all uh, your countries. Uh, I'm pretty sure that after the discussions tomorrow we'll have uh, maybe new doubts, maybe new, uh, uh, maybe new uh, questions, but certainly new uh, ideas to deal with uh, those pressing issues. The um, comprehensive approach and cross-regional participation in the Warsaw process uh, have indeed allowed us uh, to tackle not only the complexity of the new challenges confronting the Middle East, but also the imperative of finding uh, new ways to overcome them, as I was saying. With this uh, solution-oriented approach, the uh, Warsaw process has been able to acknowledge the evolving geopolitical reality in the Middle East, uh, to strengthen uh, old partnerships, and forge new ones with the uh, common aim of fostering security and enhancing regional cooperation. The Warsaw process, in this sense, is totally compatible with uh, Brazil's vision uh, for what we're sure can be one day, maybe sooner than we think, uh, more peaceful, secure, and uh, prosperous Middle East. The uh, fulfillment of this vision requires a concerted approach by like-minded countries to fight threats and drivers of instability, old and new. We must take decisive action against disruptors, be them state or non-state uh, actors. Uh, I'm convinced that we have to uh, address issues as they are, as they present themselves in reality, 
and not as is uh, sometimes the case or was sometimes the case in the past, just by reading from manuals of uh, uh, international politics or just by uh, repeating uh, uh, older uh, declarations and, uh, and communiques for, from past moments uh, in history. Uh, the uh, enemies of peace and security do not hesitate to cause turmoil in that region for the sake of hegemonic ambitions or for uh, uh, their uh, aims of uh, uh, promoting violence as a mean towards ideology or ideology as a pretext for violence. We must uh, also work together cooperatively to overcome the main humanitarian and refugee issues affecting millions of individuals in Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, which, is, which bring us, brings us closer to uh, the topic of uh, this working group. Uh, just let me mention, please, that uh, if, uh, as is the case, uh, the Middle East is the, represents the largest crisis uh, in terms of refugees in the world. Unfortunately, we have close to our border uh, and inside Brazil and our neighboring countries, the second largest already uh, uh, refugee crisis uh, in the history in history uh, due to uh, the uh, awful regime still in place in Venezuela so we here far away from the Middle East we uh, are getting a much more a much closer sense of uh, what uh, this situation is in the, in the Middle East and uh, we hope why not that uh, solutions in one of those areas, since we live in a, uh, such an interconnected world, can help uh, with solutions in the other, in South America and in the Middle East. Uh, dear friends, uh, regarding Syria, uh, please allow me to uh, also make a few specific remarks. This working group uh, is an opportunity to shed light on our common conviction that the only effective manner to address the tragic crisis in Syria is through political means. Brazil continues to support the negotiation process led by UN Special Envoy Ambassador Pedersen and hopes uh, that his effort uh, to bridge the uh, gaps between the parties will be matched by a similar commitment by all sides in order to forge a new democratic and prosperous Syria. Education is the backbone of any future process of reconstruction and the pillar of long-term security in the Middle East. There are 1.5 million school-aged Syrian refugee children living in Turkey, Jordan, and Lebanon, but nearly half of them do not have access to formal education. Host countries have taken general steps to increase enrollment, for example, uh, offering free public education to these children, which is commendable, of course. However, barriers such as uh, child labor, enrollment requirements, language difficulties, and a lack of affordable transportation are keeping children out of the classroom in some of these countries. In 2019, nearly 2.1 million children were out of school and a further 1.3 million were at risk of dropping out in Syria. We recall that Brazil has received uh, more than 3,000 Syrian refugees since the beginning of the conflict. We continue to offer humanitarian visas to those affected by the war so that they can find protection in our country. As refugees in Brazil, individuals affected by the conflict in Syria have access to all public services, including public education. Nonetheless, to ensure educational assistance of quality in situations of vulnerability remains a challenge. We count on different public institutions, international partners, and civil society to help us improve the lives of refugees in our country. Uh, on Yemen, due to Due to the protected conflict, there are more than 3.3 million internally displaced persons in the country. In 2020, the conflict in Yemen will complete its sixth year. Throughout this period, its humanitarian consequences have escalated unceasingly, bringing us to what amounts to one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. More than 24 million people in Yemen are in need of immediate humanitarian assistance, comprising roughly 80% of the country's population. 
after years of uh, military deadlock, important breakthroughs occurred at the talks held in Stockholm. But the implementation of the terms agreed upon has been marred by renewed skirmishes between the warring parties. In an effort to contribute to the uh, cessation of hostilities, Brazil agreed to deploy personnel to take part in the UN detachment constituted by the Security Council, charged with monitoring the situation on the ground. We regard, with regard to Iraq, Brazil is following with great concern the worrying developments in the country. Further escalation is to avoid at all costs, for it could have potentially devastating consequences, in particularly for the most vulnerable populations in the region. We are particularly concerned by the suspension in granting access, uh, access letters to humanitarian actors carrying out critical missions in support of Iraq's vulnerable people. In the past three months, aid deliveries throughout Iraq have slowed due to the discontinuation of previously agreed upon access uh, procedures, authorization procedures. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we have worked with uh, our partners from the US and Poland in this working group and uh, we're committed to keep this as an ongoing process to bring together countries, international organizations and civil society uh, with much knowledge uh, and experience on the humanitarian challenges in the Middle East. The emphasis on education and child protection is particularly important. It allows us to face today's most pressing humanitarian needs and the situation of most vulnerable groups, focusing on the reconstruction and peace building uh, tasks of the future. It connects, it connects the urgency of present needs with a longer term perspective on the fundamental human dimension implicated in bringing about sustainable peace. During the course of our discussions, we will be able to uh, uh, ponder on the challenges faced by our own region, as I mentioned, the uh, policies uh, uh, of the regime uh, in place in Venezuela have caused al almost already five million Venezuelans to leave their homeland. And in the near future, we in Latin America may well be confronted with uh, uh, more than seven million people, uh, displaced people and, and refugees, uh, which amounts, by the way, to more than 20% of the population of Venezuela. Uh, uh, as you know, this uh, regional uh, crisis has affected Brazil. The government's response uh, was to set up a multi-stakeholder government-led task force named the uh, Operation Welcome, Operação Acolhida, which uh, uh, we're glad to, to see has become a reference worldwide in order to ensure assistance, protection and opportunity to uh, Venezuelans who have crossed into our country as refugees, asylum seekers or migrants. Uh, in the current phase of uh, Operation Welcome, Venezuelans uh, can choose to be part of our internal relocation program. This initiative boosts the uh, prospects of them finding jobs and increases their income by an average of 200%. A recent study has found out that 100% of children of participating households are enrolled in schools. Uh, those are a few of the uh, uh, figures and uh, practices that we think can be a part of the Brazilian contribution to the debate here so that the, uh, all the, uh, those uh, appalling uh, figures and data that I just spoke about can be addressed and uh, curbed in the near future. We are confident that bringing different perspectives and experiences together will contribute to finding innovative solutions to our collective work. I'm very thankful to all participants who have taken the time to be with us and who will upgrade our discussions. Uh, we think we should be confident and that we should uh, make this a moment of uh, 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 answering to this old uh, saying that uh, many heads uh, together they, uh, are bigger than the uh, uh, sum of their parts that our uh, collective work here will uh, certainly uh, make us uh, wiser and more capable of addressing uh, those issues, those pressing issues. Uh, it's great to uh, uh, have the opportunity to host you here, and uh, I would like to invite you to our welcome uh, cocktail here at uh, Itamarachi Palace. 
you'll have the opportunity to enjoy a performance by the music group Alma Syria, Syrian Soul, which was formed by Syrian nationals who came to Brazil as refugees and have now acquired their Brazilian citizenship. Uh, I hope you have a pleasant evening and uh, look forward to seeing you upstairs. Thank you very much.